All right, let's look some more at the Obama budget, possible stock market impact. No growth, but let's find out what the Rankin House budget member says, Mr. Paul Ryan from the great state of Wisconsin. Paul, before I get to you on the question of pro-growth, I want you to comment. There was a very heated exchange today between New Hampshire Senator Judd Gregg and budget director Peter Orzog. Let's take a listen. One of the lingering problems in, the, in our financial markets, however, is access to credit for small businesses. It's why in this budget we're... No, no, no. You can't make that type of statement with any legitimacy. Okay. You cannot make that statement. This is small the law. Small businesses are not suffering from Let access, me tell you what the law says. Let me read it to you again, because you don't appear to understand the law. The law is very clear. The money's recouped from the TARP shall be paid into the general fund of the Treasury for the reduction of the public debt. It's not for a piggy bank because you're concerned about lending to small Senator, businesses and you want to get a political event when you go out and make a speech in Nashua, New Hampshire. Whoa, Judd Gregg on the... Who is right, Mr. Ryan, Judd Gregg or Peter Orzog? You really want me to answer that, Larry? Yes, I, sir. Judd Gregg, I helped, I worked with Judd Gregg on that language which says all TARP money goes back to pay off the deficit. It doesn't become a revolving piggy bank or slush fund for all these boutique programs the administration's cooking up. The law is really clear. TARP goes back to pay down the deficit. End of story. All right, let me ask you this because I said this at the beginning of the show. I do not understand. The Obamaites want to use TARP money, $30 billion mm -hmm. of the TARP money, to somehow shuttle it to small bankers to make loans, to small businesses. But, Paul, they are going to raise the top tax rate That's right. on the principal small business right. owners and revenue generators. And most of those are subchapter S corporations, those small businesses, right. those small banks. So how the heck is this? On the one hand, they're going to tax them, and on the other hand, they're going to take the taxpayer TARP money and loan them? See, I don't get this. I thought I knew something about economics. I've only been doing this about 40 years. That's right. I don't, you've got to take me through this. I don't understand it. It's very simple, Larry. The secret to success in this administration for growth in the economy is the capital markets don't flow through New York, they flow through Washington. Mm. Washington's in control, Washington micromanages. You know, you're talking about class warfare, populism. Class warfare makes good politics, it makes really bad economics, but they're doubling down on the class warfare. They know they have political problems, so this year they're gonna go to people and prey on their emotions of fear, envy, and anger, and try to tap into that as a way to survive this next election. All right, well, we've got a uh, full screen of all these um, tax proposals mm -hmm. in this budget. Two now, trillion total. Yeah, two trillion in total. We're gonna put it, put it up there. You're talking about banks, you're talking about business tax hikes, you're talking about top end earner mm -hmm. tax hikes, you're talking about lower deductions and uh, qualifying for the taxes, mm -hmm. you're talking about hedge funds, capital gains, dividends. Now, Paul, here's the thing. I, I don't understand. If you're taxing capital mm -hmm. in the name of what? Left wing social justice, mm -hmm. social mm -hmm. visions, whatever. Redistribution, sure. Redistribution, left wing college professors in the White House. If you're taxing investment, doesn't that hurt job creation and wages on Main Street it in lowers, the heartland? It lowers the after tax rate of return. It makes risk taking, lending, investing, entrepreneurship go down. So, yeah, of course. We know this. I mean, Larry, we know this. When, when they did it in 78, when Carter lowered the capital gains tax, it worked. When Bill Clinton did this, when Jack Kennedy did this. So these ideas aren't just Republican ideas. Democrats have put good tax-lowering proposals in place before. You raise taxes on capital, you get less of it. You lower taxes on capital, you get more of it. That's what creates the jobs. Look, where I come from, almost all jobs come from small businesses. 70% are from small businesses, these subchapter S corporations, these pass-through entities, and we're going to raise their tax rates up to about 40 percent. We're going to raise their seed capital, the capital gains and dividends, by, by almost 100 percent when it comes to dividends. So look, even with all these tax increases, Larry, their deficit in the budget they just gave us today never goes down below 3 percent of GDP which all economists say is the maximum level a deficit should get. Well, here's what I don't get to. This is another thing, because Larry Summers is a smart guy. We may not agree with him, but he's a very That's smart right. guy. So is Christy Romer. These are smart people. Mm -hmm. So is uh, Tim Geithner. They're smart. Now, look, you know, I know, and they have to know. They do know. If you jack up the top tax rate, then mm -hmm. these small business owner operators mm -hmm. are going to move from the small business S-Corp 
back to the corporate C corp rate, which is now going to be 35 percent, mm -hmm. whereas the small business personal income rate is going to be 40. You're never going to see the money. And investors are going to move into tax exempt bonds, and everyone's going to avoid income. So besides holding down growth, well, but, here's what I don't get there. Those C corps will then get those C corps will get hit with a dividends tax that's going to be 39.6 as well. So you're either way you're going to get hit. If you go from a sub S to a C corp, you're going to get hit with higher taxes. It's going to hurt job creation. It's not going to materialize the revenue they hope. And if you take a look at the administration's budget, not only are they deficit as far as the eye can see, doubling and tripling our national debt, two trillion in higher taxes, spending increases that eclipse all of that. They're saying to bring all this stuff into balance, they'll have a commission, which is very partisan, I might add, this, the way they're designing this commission, to fix it all. So that means more tax increases down the road. So well, this is just the beginning of the tax increase onslaught that's being prepared. All right, but here's the other speculation. What I'm calling the new Senator Scott Brown Congress mm -hmm. and all the political implications. The White House is tone deaf to this revolution that's going that's right. on. Tea Party populism, mm -hmm. free market populism, a return of JFK, Ronald Reagan, supply right. sideism. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that you, Republicans, can join with some moderate Democrats and extend the Bush tax cuts and start pushing for broad based across the board tax reform? That's exactly what we are trying to do. Uh, Speaker Pelosi and Majority Leader Reid have been really good at closing ranks, at preventing their members from working with us on these kinds of ideas. We have yet to penetrate the Democratic machine here in Congress. We're going to keep trying, though, on that, Larry. The problem, by the way, though, even with Scott Brown's election, though, all this fiscal policy, the tax and the spending, that stuff can go through what we call reconciliation, mm. and you can't filibuster those things. So those tax increases can happen with 51 votes. A lot of them are already automatic. Wow. But the new ones they're proposing, all you need are 51 votes in the Senate. So even though we got the Scott Brown election, which was great, that's not enough to stop this onslaught of new taxes. Well, I think that's the big, or one of the big debates in the stock market, Paul. One debate, obviously, is what kind of recovery. But the mm -hmm. other debate is the tax attack. And I think what you just said, it may not be possible to stop the tax attack, or then again, we don't know. Anyway, I wish you luck on it. You've been Thanks. very good to us. Thank you, Congressman Paul Ryan from Wisconsin. Now, much more on this subject. President Obama's big government budget was released yesterday, and guess who's paying?